Hello friends and welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host Tom Downey. Let's dive into the latest rumors around the Cowboys beginning with Damon Snacks Harrison. Are the Cowboys going to add him? Oh, how I wish I could give this four stars. For now, it's still going to remain just the two. It does make sense for both parties, quite frankly. And Mike Fisher reports the Cowboys are quote unquote open to pursuing Damon Harrison. I also wish there was a little bit a firmer desire of interest there than just open to it. Now, the Cowboys in the past have not valued run stoppers. They have not valued the players like Damon Harrison, these giant interior defensive linemen who stop the run first and foremost. However, there is a new regime in charge, a regime that values that run-clogging role, and that's the, the likely reason behind a little bit more interest. I do still wonder if the price tag could be an issue. The Cowboys haven't valued the spot before. We don't have a great feel for what the organization is willing to spend on the position. Now, across the board, they seem hesit hesitant to go above the $6 million per year price tag. On the bright side, I think you could get Harrison for less than that. Now, you have Gerald McCoy locked in as your three technique, that more pass-rushing defensive lineman, although he's a good run stopper as well. We'll see if Antoine Woods comes back. I like the fit, though, right there for Damon Harrison as an upgrade over Antoine Woods, who you can still keep on the roster. He's going to be cheap. He's supposed to be an ERFA, an exclusive rights free agent. You can still t kick Tyrone Crawford in on the inside if you choose to keep him. That is very much not set in stone. But as you guys know, I have been pushing a while now. Fatty's only 2020 on the interior defensive line, and Damon Harrison is like the perfect example of that role. So I want him on this team. But you guys let me know. What is the one free agent you want to sign the most right now? Your top target out there. I will make this the pinned comment on this video. So if you get an ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down there and cast your vote. Maybe one of the ones you guys are putting in is Everson Griffin. Is there interest in him? Much like Damon Harrison, I wish this was four stars. But I can only give it two right now because we got conflicting reports. That old good thing. CBS Sports, Patrick Walker, and Dallas Morning News, David Moore, reports that there is some interest in Everson Griffin, which is awesome. But wait. Mike Fisher, Ed Warner, one claims it's, you know, or Fisher says it's really not high on the Cowboys list. Ed Warner calls it unlikely. Now, I think at some level, all of these reports could be true that there is some level of interest from the Cowboys, but it is unlikely and it's not high on their list. The Cowboys do not have a Robert Quinn replacement right now on the roster. We'll see if one Randy Gregory is able to return to the organization. But Griffin would be that guy. He would come in and immediately start across from Demarcus Lawrence. He's a good player. Now, he is older than Quinn, so his price tag will, in all likelihood, be lesser than Robert Quinn. The issue is for Griffin and for the Cowboys, Griffin is coming off a contract which he declined and opted out of $14.5 million per year. Now, I don't think he's going to get that price tag, but if the Cowboys don't want to go above six. Did they even meet at 8, or does Griffin get 10 like Leonard Floyd did somehow on the open market? Now, let's say, hypothetically speaking, and you can afford both if you want to, but if you could only add one of these guys, who would you pick? Type G for Griffin, H for Harrison. My answer might come as a surprise to you. You guys know that I am a, the founding member of Fatty's Only 2020. But I still need edge rushers as well, and pass rush is more important than run stopping. Because of that, I'm actually going to type in my G for Griffin. I want both. I would love to get even just one of them on this team. I'm not overly optimistic at this point. But for now, if I could only pick one, give me the pass rusher. It is easier for me to find a run stopper in the draft than it is a really good edge player. Now, if you guys are stuck at home because we're all quarantined and bored and all of that, we got you covered. We're not going to go anywhere. We are still going to put out awesome Cowboys videos every day for you guys. So if you are not already and you got some time to kill, hit that big red button and subscribe. Another potential free agent target here for the Dallas Cowboys, Philip Dorsett. Not to be a, not, not to be a broken record here. I'm going to give this one two stars as well. I think it makes some sense, but I'm not as on board Dorsett as I am the other two. Now, the report from Calvin Watkins is the Cowboys have some interest in Dorsett, and then it comes down to the price. Gee, 
Where have we heard that before? Oh, with like every single Cowboys free agent target ever. My issue with Dorsett, even though he's a former first-round pick and he brings speed, two things the Cowboys a, historically have liked to value because they have to find those Will McClay specials, and they do need speed on the roster. Dorsett hasn't really been a slot receiver in the NFL. That's not really been his role. And the other issue is his role hasn't been that great. Dorsett has not been a impactful NFL wide receiver. I don't really know how else to describe it. He just hasn't been that guy in the NFL since a 2015 first round pick by the Colts out of the, at the University of Miami. He hasn't been the impact dynamic playmaker. So I don't view Dorsett, and I hope the Cowboys don't, view him as a Randall Cobb replacement. What I view him as, a Devin Smith upgrade. And they check some similar boxes. Former early round prick, or pick, excuse me, brings speed in, into that area as well. So I, I like the idea of Dorsett on a cheap one-year deal with little to no guaranteed money, but if I'm going to ask him to come in and be my new Randall Cobb, I'm going to think that I'll be a little bit disappointed in the end. Now I have a special deal for you guys. Head over to chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jersey. That is chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jersey. They are 25% off if you use promo code THROW. That's T-H-R-O-W. And I'll put that description in the comments and a link with the promo codes. All you got to do is click and shop. It's not just your favorite players, by the way, that those jerseys are on sale. Custom jerseys are also on sale right now. It is at chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. Just do not forget to use the promo code THROW, T-H-R-O-W. It'll be across the top of the screen on the site as well. But it's 25% off at chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. Let's talk more about the defensive line, a common theme right now because it's a big time need. The Cowboys pick McCoy over Collins. Yeah, four stars on this one, and I don't know why there's members of Cowboys Twitter out there saying, wow, they should have kept Malik Collins. Give me Gerald McCoy, guys. Here are the two deals, right? Gerald McCoy signs for a three-year, $18.3 million deal, $9 million guaranteed. Malik Collins, a one-year, $6 million deal. Gerald McCoy will cost less in 2020 than Malik Collins will. Now, the average per year on those deals is very similar. And we expected, the Cowboys did, to lose Malik Collins in free agency. That was not a huge surprise. So if you're paying less for Gerald McCoy, you're thinking you're going to get a lesser player, right? Not so fast, my friend. Tackles in favor of Gerald McCoy. Sacks, Gerald McCoy. Tackles for loss, Gerald McCoy. Malik Collins actually did generate more pressure. That's noteworthy. Collins did it on more snaps but the pressure rate was still slightly in favor of Collins. Gerald McCoy, meanwhile, look at the run grade. I know that pro football focus isn't perfect, but I, th I think it's a valuable metric in terms of figuring out who's a good run stopper. Gerald McCoy, much better than Malik Collins is. So for me, it was kind of a no-brainer. Going with Gerald McCoy over Collins makes sense. Now those signings and losses, they'll cancel each other out on the comp pick side of things. Here's where things stand. As of right now, per over the cap, the projections, Byron's going to net the Cowboys a third, Quinn a fourth, Cobb a fifth, Heath and Suofilo a sixth. Now, you can only keep four. You cannot get more than four comp picks, which is why I am very confident in saying the Cowboys are not done in free agency. They're going to add another player or two or three I just think they want to keep those Byron Jones, Robert Quinn comp picks safe, which means maybe they don't spend big on interior, or if they do, maybe they add a player who won't count against the comp pick formula. Those are often guys who have been cut. So having now seen the contracts from Malik Collins and the side-by-side -side player production comparison, who would you have signed? Type MC for Malik Collins or GM for Gerald McCoy as I put on my GM hat. Not a single laugh from producer Alicia. Great, thanks, Alicia. I'm going to add McCoy every time. I know he's older, and in three years, Collins might end up being the better player, but I'm focused on this year and next year. Gerald McCoy wins that for me. I got a better run stopper and a more productive player. It's not really all that close for me. I'm spamming my GMs in the comments section. Let's move on now to David Irving. You people keep asking me about this, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. It is one star. 
Do not bother getting your hopes up. Thought they should be up in the first place. Now, the NFL CBA, the new one, is going to eliminate marijuana suspensions. At least it should eliminate them. There could be a path in which they get suspended, but the reality is it's probably not going to happen. Irving has claimed he's going to apply for reinstatement. The Cowboys have leaked that, you know, they haven't ruled out a return necessarily. They'd explore it. It was, I think, a little bit more of their, hey, you know, we're not going to ever close the door on anything. The issues for David Irving, though, were not just marijuana related. Yes, that was why he got suspended. The issues for David Irving go far beyond that. This is not a comparison of Randy Gregory. One of them loves football. One of them has a, a, a mental health issue. It's not really David Irving's problem. David Irving's problem is they didn't care. He doesn't value, he doesn't love football, which is okay. You don't have to love the game. But Irving himself put out the, the little said, hey, I'm going to apply for reinstatement. And he said, I've never had to be in shape before. That's bad, guys. That's not what you want your players saying. They think they're so good, they don't have to be in shape. Well, guess what happened in 2018? Irving was not in shape, and it negatively impacted him on the field. So do you want to give Irving another chance? Type one for yes, zero for no. I say no. I don't want to deal with the headache and the wild card that is David Irving. Yeah, I might end up regretting it if he ends up having a great season somewhere else, which is certainly possible, but I don't want to deal with it. I've played that game. I'm done playing that game with David Irving. If I'm giving anyone a chance, it's definitely Randy Gregory instead. We'll briefly talk draft now as well. Is Trevon Diggs the ideal replacement for Byron Jones? I'm going to give it one star. I, I kind of get where, where Bleacher Report was coming from in, in, in when they put out the article of, hey, Diggs is a great replacement for Byron. He's the ideal one in, in the draft. He does bring better ball skills. I get that. He was a former receiver, Stephon Diggs' his brother. I get the fit there. But he has speed concerns. And my number one goal when I'm replacing my number one corner is to get the best player I can. There are going to be better corners on the board than Trayvon Diggs, I believe, barring a true stunner at 17 overall. I mean, Jeffrey Okuda, we know he's going to be gone. He's not going to be on the board. Christian Fulton, C.J. Henderson, I bet you a lot one of those two is going to be there. Jeff Gladney's going to be there. I'll take all three of those guys over Diggs. Now, that's not to say I don't like Diggs. And in a trade-down scenario at 27, I'm very interested. And a trade down is there at 37 I'm crazy interested but I, I don't love the value there at number 17 for Trevon Diggs now, I think he could fit in the Cowboys scheme he would help you out for sure but I gotta maximize my picks there will be better corners I believe available at 17 overall than Diggs but as a reminder you know you kind of got to get a, a number one corner Awuzie right now is CB1 that's concerning. I think it's concerning for everyone watching. You got good depth, though. Maurice Canada, Jordan Lewis, Anthony Brown, and Awuzie. It's actually not a bad foursome of depth if it's two through five and not one through four, which is why I think in round one, corner is still a possibility for the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.